Do you remember such iconic memes as Hitler and his hilarious translations regarding cryptocurrencies? Der Feind operiert jetzt am nördlichen Stadtrand zwischen Frohnau und Pankow und im Osten ist der Feind bis zur Linie Lichtenberg Marsdorf Karlshorst gelangt. Mit dem Angriff Steiners wird das alles in Ordnung kommen. Or the raccoon that loses all of his investments in the water. How about Mr. Bean not giving a damn about market volatility? Well, here are their late 2018 counterparts, and as you might imagine, they haven't aged very well. And that's it for my market overview. Insightful, I know. Mm, new beer on the market. Belgium accumulation. So sweet. Hashtag please sponsor me. Speaking of sponsors. Thank you, Stake, for sponsoring this video. This just in, our top story tonight. Swiss Bitcoin ETP sees record volume as institutional investors buy the dip. This sounds professional. So I saw this piece of news earlier. I actually didn't cover it um, when Switzerland announced a ETP, which gives you a basket. It's like an ETF, but it gives you a basket of cryptocurrencies. 48% of it is Bitcoin, 30% XRP, 17 Ethereum, Bitcoin Cash, and Litecoin. Now they're saying that they've had record volume recently, increasing sixfold over when they first started. It's still not very much volume in the, in the greater whole, but um, this is an interesting sort of thing, pattern recurring with many institutional investments. They don't start off immediately having high volume. They build it up over time. I don't know if that's gonna be the case with an ETF backed, but previous market history has told us not to expect mega volume to begin with, but that it does increase quite rapidly over time. I'm trying to be a sensible bull. Sensible. I'm trying to be sensible. So, are we really capitulating right now? So I'm going to be talking about this article from Coindesk. I think it was well written and well worth a look. As you all may have seen many times before, the Wall Street cheat sheet, psychology of a market cycle used for many, many years in understanding market cycles. So, where are we on the charts right now? Mm. An argument could be made for every single point up here, I suppose. Now, in this interpretation, the denial stage, it could be argued, lasted for five months as Bitcoin's repeated defense of $6,000 offered hope that the broader market and altcoins with strong fundamentals would recover lost ground before the year end. So that's already starting off on a on a big one. We're, we're already saying it, 6K wasn't capitulation. We're saying it's denial. It's not even panic, but denial. My investments are with great companies. They will come back. Now, while you personally, I'm talking to you, might not have been in the denial stage at 6,000 Bitcoin. Maybe you were quite happy with that. I personally was. But we're not talking about you, okay? We're talking about the market as a whole. You narcissistic, arrogant. Those hopes, however, were shattered as Bitcoin nosedived below $6,000 on November 14th, pushing the Bitcoin market into the panic stage, causing investors to look for an exit with no price floor in sight. Mm. If we are still in the panic stage, that means we've not even hit capitulation yet, yet alone sideways trading at anger. So how does he justify this? The argument for capitulation not having set in yet is that it is usually a single extreme selling event, short in duration, but backed by a surge in sell volume and subsequent buy volume. So what he is talking about there is that true capitulation, assuming we're not there, would see overwhelming sell pressure to the point that the price would rocket down, smarter money would buy up that dip and it would immediately bounce off an incredibly low figure. We have rocketed from six to three, but then we kind of sideways trade it. So he's saying it, mm, mm, mm. it's all conjecture, but an interesting theory nonetheless. Is the market truly in the depression stage? Is it depressed like this hamster?
you just know I'm pretty proud of myself for finding a, a place to slot that clip in. <laughs> Are we at the utter disaster stage right now? Where the only place we can go from here is up. Only fortune tellers know for sure. And technical analysts, of course. As recent as November 1st, Bitcoin suffered just that and it seems panic is still the most likely candidate for Bitcoin's current stage in its market cycle, at least until a break below the psychological price level of 3000 incites capitulation. <sighs> so what's next then? The result of capitulation is a lengthy period of sideways price action and misery felt by investors. Damn. Damn. Okay. So, I'll leave this post linked below if you want to check it out for yourself. Interesting theories. Not sure if it's true. I'm going to be prepared either way. So, I guess I, as a quick update on my what coins am I buying now video. Bearing in mind, I still currently hold cryptocurrencies. I'm, I'm strapped in. If we're going to fly, I'm ready. Let's go. But I have buy orders set all the way down. So, I mentioned I had a buy order at 3250. That has been filled. I tethered in at 3500. Sweet 8% gains. Much wow. I now have new Bitcoin buy orders set at 2500, 2250, 1750, 1500, and 1250. Ready to catch violent capitulation if it does end up crashing and then bouncing. Again, just what I'm doing, not intended to be financial advice, not intended for what you should do. Dollar cost averaging is the most recommended method of investing anyway, not trying to time the market. My 28 cent XRP buy order got very close, but none of it has filled yet. Uh, still not buying any Ethereum, but the 33% mining rewards reduction coming in January is a pretty considerable consideration, if you can say that. Shorting the market on BitMEX is also a consideration. I was looking into it over the weekend. I got a little spooked when I saw the charts were at an all-time high. Going back a few months here, December 8th, there were never more shorts than they'd been before. Over 43,000 short contracts open. Either way, I still strongly believe in the fundamentals because cryptocurrencies fulfill a needed purpose in the world of which there is very little comparable. But under no circumstances do I make any pretense of knowing where the price is going over the next few weeks, months, or years. Actually, if we are talking years, I'm pretty sure we're going up from here. But of the next few weeks and months, no one knows for sure. Do you feel that we're in the capitulation stage? Or are we not there yet? Let me know your thoughts. Thank you very much for watching. Leave a like if you enjoyed, and I'll see you again soon.